Welcome to this tech tip provided by Imaginate Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'm going to be working through the tech tip with you today. In this tech tip we have a simple customer request. We have a customer who's working on a cone and a pipe and they need to figure out a way to create a cutout in the cone that updates parametrically when the diameter of the pipe is changed. Now we're going to take a simple approach to create this parametric cutout. The first thing I want to do is take the visibility off of the cone so we can focus on the pipe. I'm going to activate the pipe component and I'm going to create a surface that represents the interior of the pipe. To do this, I'm going to create a sketch on the end of the pipe and I'm going to create an extrusion. This is going to be a surface extrusion of the inside edge going to send it down this way and we'll go ahead and associate it with the length of the pipe parameter. Now I'll click return and turn on the cone. And there you can see our surface penetrating the cone. Now the next thing I want to do is copy that surface into the cone. To do that I'm going to activate the cone segment and I'm going to use the copy object command. We'll select copy object and for our selections we'll select face and I want to make sure we set up an associative relationship and that we copy this in as a surface. I'll click OK. Now that surface has been copied to the cone just to make sure you can see that a little bit better, I'm going to turn off the visibility for the pipe. So here we see that copied surface in the cone. Now that we have the surface that represents the cutout, we're going to use the Sculpt command to remove the material. I'm going to select the surface, and then I'm going to use the Cut option in the Sculpt command. Now you can adjust the material that gets cut away. Right now the entire cone is going to be cut away and the cutout will be preserved. Now an easy way to modify this is to use the expand button, come down to the surfaces and modify your direction. I think in this case we'll use this option which is going to remove the cutout. We'll select OK and there we have the cutout in the cone. I'll return to the assembly and turn on the visibility of the pipe. Now I'm going to clean up my view just a little bit. I'm going to activate the pipe component and I'm going to turn off the visibility of that surface. We don't need to see that. And I'm also going to take off the visibility of our main sketch. I also want to activate the cone very quickly and we'll come in and remove that or take the visibility of that sketch off as well. Now before we test the parameter I do want you to take a moment and notice the browser. You'll notice that now the cone has an associative relationship to the pipe. You can notice the associative relationship. You'll see the little recycle icon beside the component in the browser. This means that whenever the pipe updates, the cone will update to suit. I've activated the pipe. I'm going to go into our main extrusion sketch. We'll turn on the visibility of the sketch here. And we've got the two diameters that make up the diameter of the pipe. I'm going to change the outer diameter to 500 and we'll change the inner diameter to 450. When I click return to exit the sketch, you'll notice that the pipe and the cone update at the same time. We'll go ahead and set this back to 350 and 400. and we'll click return and again see the cutout in the cone update parametrically when the diameter of the pipe is changed. So this demonstrates the answer to our initial request for generating a cutout in a cone that parametrically is tied to the diameter of a pipe. But I want to take it one step further. I want to show you how to flatten the cone. I think it's important that we cover that. This would be a question that anyone looking at this particular process would have. Uh, can we flatten a cone with this particular cutout built into it? I'm going to activate the cone 
and the first thing I'm going to do is turn it into a sheet metal component. We'll do that with a convert to sheet metal command. And I do need to modify my defaults. In this case, we have a six millimeter thickness. We want to go ahead and use that as the default thickness. In order to flatten the cone, I'm going to need to establish a seam. And to do that, I need to use the rip command. But before I do that, I'll need to have a point to rip on. I'm going to use the point command. I'm going to pick this work plane and that edge. That'll give me the point. Then I can use the rip command, selecting this face and this point. Now that I have my seam, I can go ahead and generate my flat pattern. Now if I zoom in to our cutout, you're going to see that the edges are tapered. And this is a result of us generating the cutout the way we did by basically projecting the surface of the through hole of the pipe into the cone. Now in some cases, this would be perfectly fine, but if you wanted to generate a purely accurate uh, flat pattern, we would need to take care of this. Let me go ahead and show you how we do that. We'll go back over to the folded model, and I'm actually going to close this particular part and do this back in the assembly. Back in the assembly, I'm going to make sure that the cone is active. On the model tab, I am going to choose to delete all the faces except for the exterior face. Uh, there's the delete face command. We'll go ahead and select these faces. There's actually a number of faces here that I have to, to delete. Spin this around. There's two faces in here we want to delete. There's a face at the bottom of the part. And the face on the cutout as well. This will leave us just the exterior surface of the cone. Now we're going to use the thicken command. We'll select that surface. We'll set our thickness back to six millimeters and make sure that it thickens to the interior of the part. Now when we generate our flat pattern, we'll have a nice clean edge for the cutout. This is going to conclude our tech tip for generating a parametric cutout between a pipe and a cone. If you have any questions about the tech tip that you saw today, please contact your local Imaginate Technologies support representative.